even he has to admit that a matchup is just too bad. Right. This is one of them. So we're going to be seeing him busting out his very unorthodox Corrin, uh, if you ever have seen it before. He does weird options at times. Yes. Op options very fitting of numbers, though. Someone yeah, of who course. Oh! And the down air! Uh, I thought he was going to go for the double dunk. That would have been absurd. That would have been insanity right out the gate this early. But that's what I say. There are options that are very typical of John, where he likes to set things up in advance. He likes to force a situation so that he can really maximize the most of his current positioning. But yeah. Dill's the kind of player that's going to move around a lot. You're not really going to max out too much on someone who is forced to approach, and especially on a character like Diddy Kong, who has no problem approaching and has a plethora of options. Absolutely. Um, I think that probably one of the biggest make or break or make or break deals for numbers are going to be his ledge guarding. Not necessarily his edge guarding. When Diddy Kong's off stage, you know, you can, you know, it's, it's whatever. You know, you might gimp him, you might not. But when Diddy Kong is on ledge as a Corrin player, that is where you're going to be really dishing out the hurt. Because Corrin has so many amazing ways to cover ledge get up. Like, for instance, what is it? If she runs towards the ledge and then charges forward smash in the other direction, covers four get up options. It's. It's something that, you know, a lot of characters don't have options for that. Yeah. A lot of characters don't have something good to fall back on. So, like, sure, you can recognize you're in a really bad spot and you know how to get out of that. But it might not be the best, especially on a character like Corrin who can really mix up how they're going to respond in a situation like that. And such simple tools that let them do whatever they want. They can just run a train. Absolutely. And now we're, uh, we do see Numbers love to use that side B. Numbers is the sort of guy where he's, he's a fan of cheese, you know? You know, his, uh, his imported <laughs> Japanese uh, <laughs> swordsman cheese. Uh, and so if he has a move that he can abuse, and especially in certain matchups, he will abuse it. You know, it's the sort of thing where you see him all the time as we fit trainer with side B and the ledge and everything. When he picks up, when he picks up corn, it's just like I'm going to side B when I have to. Because not only is it such a time. strong move, but you see John primarily use it for the matter of micro spacing. He'll use it and then he'll just like uh, lunge backwards. You see that a lot from him. He'll lunge through so that he covers that space in front of the pin. But all that space behind him is perfectly safe. Oh my god, or he could do it like that. Wait, amazing read. Wow. Uh, so, also, do um, the one thing I will say about numbers and specifically how he gets very pin happy at certain percents. I talked to uh, freelancer Leo, the Mewtwo player, and the time, the one time that freelancer Leo has beaten numbers, it was because game three, he told me he just let him time and pin himself into a timeout. Where it's like, if he had the lead, he just was going to let numbers keep pinning and keep pinning and keep pinning. And I mean, timeout is actually relevant right now, considering that three minutes have passed and we've only lost one stock apiece. Um, so if Dill gets the lead and numbers starts really pinning a lot, like, he might just let him do that. Just hold shield. Great. And, you know, that's the fault of when someone develops their own style for playing a certain character. Because... They learn how to utilize those tools in very unique ways, and that can really mess someone up, especially if they know the matchup so hard and true. But at the same time, it really closes out, you know, the more expected options and the reasons that those options might be more expected. It's just because sometimes they're just generally better. Yeah. So even though, yes, the side B from Corrin is a fantastic tool, it's definitely one of the reasons why Corrin's such a strong character. It's not the it's not the the get all be all of its yeah. move kit. Uh, I, I kind of want to see, I would like to see more grab from numbers, honestly. Like, at this point, he is hard conditioned Dill to shield. Yeah. <laughs> like, like there is, like, so, I think that one of the big purposes of that side B is, first of all, to edge guard because it's stupid for edge guarding. Uh, but also, uh, as a tool for, um, conditioning your opponent. Because Corn is a... My biggest problem with Corrin is not the fact that she has a side B that's, for some characters, um, impossible to punish. Uh, my problem is that she has a kill throw. So at high percents, she has this ridiculously safe move and pin, and then basically you're conditioned to shield, and at that point you just bust out the grab. Uh, so I think that's probably what Numbers' game plan is at this point. He's going to keep on doing damage to Dill, uh, and he just got the percent lead, so actually this could be huge, uh, because we only have a minute left on the clock. 
And, you know, with such a simplistic plan as you already listed out, just condition for shield, going for the grab when it comes to it. Under normal circumstances, yeah, that's a fine and dandy game plan, but right now you're going hit for hit with Dill's Diddy, and that's not a character you really want to see going into higher percentages, even if you do play as safely as John Numbers does. The thing is, at this point, I would honestly expect a timeout. Like, even though we're getting to kill percents, both these players are going to slow down. Uh, so the timeout is a factor, at the very least. Because right now, Dill has the lead, which means that Numbers can't go for that pinout strategy, because at that point, Dill can just keep on shielding and like, you know, he's great. He's, he's, oh, he's like, oh, it's great. Every time you pin, you lose five seconds of the clock, you know? Uh, and he's noticing that down tilt up smash. Not going to do it quite yet, but at this point we have 20 seconds left on the clock. This is looking really bad for numbers. He's In order to close this out, he needs some type of get Diddy Kong off the stage and go for a hard edge guard or maybe just counter randomly. In the uh, yeah, I mean, counter could work, but uh, it's not getting any of the advantage that he it. needs. Yeah, Dill it. has all the stage control. Uh, that's it. And number is going for the, oh, a little salty. He actually throws his controller. He'll oh. be fine, though. John's been in worse situations. The, the thing is, I'd say that this is something that I think a lot of the New York players are starting to pick up on with Numbers Corin is that if they can get a percent lead, his pin strategy sort of backfires on them. Right. Because they can just, like, that's what Dill did, is that he just kept shielding and kept shielding, and Numbers pinned himself into a timeout. That was really what happened. Uh, We're going to see if having platforms on hand with the uh, Dreamlands layout you know, brings anything new to the table. You know, having a triplat stage really mixes up the amount of movement options that uh, Corrin has because of the interesting interactions that Dragon uh, Dragon Lunch has. Yes. Um, and at this point, so Numbers has a. Uh, you know, a lead. I wouldn't call it anything too substantial because there it just went. Um, but uh, still, nonetheless, yeah, now he no longer has a percent lead. And so the thing is that especially when game one is a timeout, that time is so fresh in the players' minds that like they are looking at their no their percentage, they are looking at the clock, and it hugely factors into the the way that the neutral is played. Absolutely. Because right now numbers is like numbers is like oh or like specifically Dill is like I need to approach because last time it was a timeout and I had the percent lead and that's why I won. And you know John Numbers is a player very patient on a good day. But when he's put in a situation like this where he's already lost a game due to a timeout, he's sitting in loser's bracket already, and Dill's running away with all this momentum, you know he's going to get aggressive. You know he's going to be trying something new, and he's going to figure out something to get around this Diddy Kong crusher. Oh, goes for the hard read with that F smash, but doesn't pick it up. But, okay, numbers not baiting, not falling for the air dodge bait. Down throw, putting... Still off stage. Let's see if numbers can capitalize. He should be able to make it back to neutral. All right. Oh, amazing DI from numbers actually getting out of that done till up <laughs> smash, and I believe that will no longer confirm. Uh, yeah, I'm liking the movement right now from numbers, but he needs to think of some way to net himself an actual <laughs> stock here. Because uh, if he. That was so close. That would have been Dill's stock right there. But nonetheless, right now we do... Oh, the hard monkey flip. Numbers tossing his head to the side. Definitely a little shaken up about that. Yeah, he is not pleased with the results of that stock. And now sitting at 113, Dill's got a pretty comfortable lead right now. He's definitely in John's head. He doesn't have to approach. And Diddy with Rage is nothing to laugh at. Yeah, that... For me, when I see John Numbers go all the way out there for this really risky pin, that's... That's a bad sign for him. Yeah. At this point, he's... I'm not going to say like he's already forfeited the match because he did just pick up the kill, but definitely his mentality is <laughs> he's waiting on the platform. That, more than anything, is about sending a message. Absolutely. <laughs> just uh, Like, we still have th more than three minutes on the clock. But, you know, that's... Dill has the percentage lead. He's got the game lead. And he's definitely got the mentality lead right now. John Numbers has got to figure out something, something to mix things up here. But we're seeing a lot of what we had earlier. Oh, great frame trap. Uh, and uh, Miss nice space is the pin. Miss space is the pin, but he did get a really nice string, combo string, and now he has the lead. So even though we have three minutes left on the clock still, uh, this game probably isn't going to be a timeout unless some real shenanigans happens. Uh, but still, these players are aware of that. You know, once again, it's still fresh in their heads. 
So at this point, Numbers is like, I need to do damage. Because otherwise, you know, I know that Dill is not scared to time me out. And sitting with Banana in hand, this is where Dill is the most comfortable. He's forcing the approach. He's got the stage control. He's using those platforms to rack up even further damage. Okay. That's He's not going to kill just yet. This stage is big. Yeah, but that's... This lead is getting bigger and bigger, and I think that's affecting numbers more and more. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's you know, it's funny. I would actually say that Dill has always been kind of a little bit of a demon for numbers, uh, especially like. I mean, we'll see how this set goes. You know, of course, Corin has amazing kill power under her belt. Yeah, she has that pin, the uh, her forward smash, of course. An excellent patience from Dill. He recognized he wasn't going to be able to go in for any aerial. He knew John had plenty of options, so he just decided to dip out, keep the stage control. Yeah, Numbers is getting a little bit shield happy. And I mean, like, he's holding the banana right now. That banana is a huge, could be huge, but there it goes. All right, opting for the down throw just to get some percent. And... Oh, wow, he goes for it still. Really strong patience, but excellent DI from Dill is going to get him back. such a hard read. Oh, Charging from down deep is going to keep him safe. All right, now he's going back to his down B, his side B strategy, but you can't, like, we've already seen that that kind of backfired on him last time. You know, if, this is the thing, like, up throw still isn't going to kill um, from Corrin. Back throw almost did. Uh, which means that he can't really go for that mix up with the shit. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh what? Dill got too antsy for it. What? I don't even know what happened. That was. Dill wanted the style. That's what Was happened. Was that what happened? I genuinely... Dill, Dill wanted to go down and gimp him, but he went too deep. And even though he waited really sh well with the uh, the barrels, it just wasn't enough. And if he waited any longer, he would have died off the bottom. Yeah, that was... Okay, uh, I guess that happened. <laughs> An unfortunate end to game two, but... You know, it could be the little pickup that John needs to get his head back in this game. Absolutely. I mean, getting timed out is one of the most... It is like, it, you don't realize how bad it is until it happens to you. Right. And then it's like, getting timed out game one especially can, for a lot of people, can just shatter them the rest of the set. Uh, ooh, okay, uh, but so right now, uh, we're back to... Smashville, where we were game one, uh, and this stage is definitely this. Is, so this is where Dell took a game one, but uh, I don't know. I guess the tri-platform layout was helping out numbers, but nonetheless, I think I think the biggest difference is that we're going to see a slowdown in the game again. Like, look at this: forty-five seconds, twenty-two percent has been dealt. Okay, no, 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 like twenty-nine or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a comfort pick for Dill. He knows this is a better stage for him. It's a better stage for Diddy. And it's going to help him with controlling the momentum of the yeah. match to a screeching crawl because that's where he wants to be right now. He's a little shook from that SD. He's still in, uh, in John Numbers' head, but not as much as during Game 2. So yeah. he doesn't have that mental momentum to roll on him. He has to sort of slow things down, pick the pieces back up, and... <sighs> Try to get and, the ball rolling again. And we're starting to see Dill whiff some of the things that he was landing in game one. I hope that that's not due to the SD messing up with his head. Uh, let's see how this goes, though. Right now, these two players are... Ooh, the back air strings. Actually, that's... Okay, now we're, like, neck and neck in terms of percent. And considering that, almost two minutes has gone by. That's a third of the match and only uh, about less than 100%, about 100 percent total between these two. Yeah, this this is the type of match where percent is going to be huge. And the way that this is going right now in game three, the winner is going to be who can compose themselves quicker. Whoever can get themselves in the proper state of mind to be able to stay patient, force approach, and just let the timeout happen if need be, is going to be the one to come out on top. Yes. And. The way that we're seeing stage control constantly fall back to Dill, it's looking like he's the one who's getting himself back in the game. Yeah, I, um, and I mean, also, it looks like one of the big things that Dill is doing right now is just when he gets the stage positioning, I think he, but like, it's just like, he's getting, he's like, he's just knocking him off over and over and over again. It's like numbers just can't get out of this corner. Um, 
And so, ah, like, I'm wondering what adjustments Numbers needs to make. He's still very reliant on that pin, and it is not working out. Like, I feel like the more Numbers uses the pin, the more it tilts him. <laughs> you know? Because like At some point, he has to realize that having the crux of his game plan for a whole character around one move just isn't working for Corrin. I mean, it works sometimes, but not in this situation. Not when, you know, he's sitting with like a 40% deficit with two, three minutes on the clock and the first stock hasn't even been taken yet. Uh, like, I, why isn't he going for grabs? Like, if <coughs> he's, he's done such a great job of conditioning Dill into, uh, into, uh, you know, shielding. So, like, that's, there it is again. Oh, he it's not it, going to kill, though. The jump is what saves numbers. And managing to return stage only to eat a peanut. Two peanuts. About <laughs> half a dozen peanuts. Three peanuts. Oh, man. This man stole the whole box of Cracker Jacks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that should be it. And the banana into forward throw is going to do it. All right. And now we have numbers in a pretty bad spot. He needs to close out this stock very quickly. But we've just seen that his approaches with Corrin have not really been doing it, especially against a character, a player who's so defensive and smart about it as Dill. Like, Dill knows, like, yeah, I feel like Numbers has to be grabbing more. Like, especially in a, like, a matchup like this, where, like, two minutes is left on the clock and percentage matters so much. Like, you know, throw out the pin, throw out the pin, throw out the pin, and then once he's really conditioned into it, just, like, you know, you know, grab. And then all of a sudden, like, it shakes his entire worldview. He's like, but, but my shield! And so then he's going to stop shielding, and then you get a pin again. You know, just treat treat it like a 50-50 every time you approach. And if you're smart about it and you're good at rock, paper, scissors, <laughs> which numbers is, uh, it might pay off eventually. Oh... Banana onto the counter isn't going to do much, but certainly works in Dill's favor having that move used now. Yeah, and this is looking pretty there. Oh, he just I wants to. Yeah. The He's minute, not feeling and I, it. Yeah. The minute left on the clock, he just quits. I was actually. I think that uh, time he actually dropped the controller. I don't think he meant to have it hit the ground. But, um. Yeah, so actually, one thing that's interesting.